Hey there friends, how's it going? It has been a little while since I have recorded a video and today I am going to take you along with me as I work on a painting that has been sitting there for about a month, probably longer than a month. I got it started and I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go with it so I just kind of let it sit and I decided to dive back into it today and kind of talk you through that process and some stuff that I want to share with you. Little life updates and creativity updates. Um, as you can see, my space hasn't changed all that much except right in front of me. There's a whole lot of stuff that needs to get put away because we just spent the last week on family vacation and yeah, life has just picked up recently, which feels good, but also kind of weird. <laughs> so at the time of recording this, it's the second week of July. Um, COVID restrictions are lifting, so people are doing a lot more out and about, um, kind of getting back to normal, cautiously optimistic that maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, this might be near, I don't know. I, I don't wanna make any predictions because as we have learned in the past year, you just never know. Um, but I am still painting and I'm starting to do some more photography work since the weather has been, well, it's been rainy, but it's summer. So we can get outside and do pictures. Um, last week I was in New Hampshire and I was at a lake house with my family up in the mountains and it was beautiful and so peaceful and relaxing and wonderful. I was able to just kind of relax and rest and recharge. And I did spend a little bit of time painting, but I decided not to try to put any sort of pressure on myself to create any masterpieces because um, it's vacation, you know? It's a time to do all the stuff that I don't usually make a lot of time for. So I spent a lot of time fishing with my kids. I caught a tiny perch on the last day. Um, and I read a whole book, which people who know me, I don't spend a lot of time reading, but I've been trying to prioritize that for myself as a way to relax and who knew, get creatively inspired by reading words <laughs> instead of just watching TV. Um, and yeah, we just, we had a great time up there, but we were ready to come home and I decided it's time to get back into painting. So, I just unpacked all my stuff. I brought a small bag of materials with me up to New Hampshire. I brought my art paper. I brought a big Ziploc baggie that I put all my paint tubes in. I had a mason jar with my favorite brushes and some painter's tape. Like it was very minimalist, um, which I thought was a pretty great way to travel and still have the option to paint if I wanted to, but I wasn't packing up my entire space here <laughs> to bring it to another house. Um, so if you're looking for any sort of travel and painting tips, maybe I'll do another video on that at some point and show you exactly how I pack. It's not fancy at all, but um, sometimes you just kind of need to see what someone else does to get ideas for what you might want to do. I did want to share with you the art that I made last week up at the lake house. Um, if you watch or look at any of my art, you know that I have mostly been really enjoying and exploring abstract art. Um, but I was just very inspired by the view that we had looking out from the house we were staying at over this lake and there were mountains in the background. It was just so beautiful and peaceful and serene. I was like, oh, I'll try something a little realist, um, which I actually felt like I struggled with a little bit. <laughs> having to get into the mindset of making it look a bit more intentional, um, less whimsical and free flowing. So this is what I ended up painting. And I used the Neo Color Artist Crayons that are water, ugh, tripping over my words, water soluble. So there are places where I kind of created a little bit of a watercolor effect along with the acrylics. Um, it, it's a happy memory of a beautiful week that we got to spend together as a family 
my husband's parents and his sister were there and their dog. Um, and it was just a really great week to spend together. So this is a great memory right here. And then I had to take my own little spin. Um, this isn't really done. I don't know if I'm going to do anything else with it, but this <laughs> was just kind of my, okay, I made this. Now I'm going to just play and have fun and get a little wild. <laughs> so those are my pieces from last week. Again, no pressure. I was on vacation and I just wanted to let the scenery inspire me. And I mean, my priority for the week was not to paint. It was to relax, which was a, a great success. Um, even though we drove home to a tropical storm. So I keep stepping on my kid's shark kite under my feet we I need to do some like serious cleaning up here but I'm gonna get set up here and start painting the inspiration for this that um at the time when I started I was inspired by a picture a travel photo um I think it was Banff State Park Banff anyways it was a beautiful picture of like this crystal blue lake with mountains and water and colorful rocks and I was like oh that's so cool um but I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna go with it from here I'm not gonna I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue on that path or maybe take it in a different direction I had originally painted um not painted I had originally taped the sides of the wood panel so the sides are completely bare but I decided to take that paint off and I'm gonna work on painting around the edges as a new technique so let's get started All right, friends, I just real quick wanted to show my workspace with you. If you are new here, I live in a condo. So I have this little corner, front corner of our house that I have set up for art. I have my art cart with my paints and other tools. I have my little tabletop easel that I can travel with. It folds up flat and it has a drawer where I can store some paint. Um, I use this palette paper that has kind of a smooth, shiny coating to it that I can use for paint mixing and, you know, it's nothing fancy. I just get it at Michael's, but you can layer up your paints on it and let it dry and keep using it and you can peel the paint off when you're done. I use these microfi bleh, microfiber towels for drying my brushes and kind of wiping things off. And then I just generally like to surround myself with plants and lots of color and things that make me happy. And I'm next to a window because I love painting with window light, even if it's cloudy or sunny or rainy, no matter what the weather is, I find that that, you know, influences my mood and how I'm going to work for the day. So as I said, this is a painting that I started about a month ago, a little more than a month ago, and I let it sit for a while. It's a wood panel, and I had taped the edges so that all the edges and sides are clean, but I'm probably going to start exploring painting around the edges as I go. Um, I kind of like the idea of extending the art around all, all four sides, and yeah, I'm going to get started. I'm going to throw some paint over on my palette paper and get to work. All right, friends, as you can see, I have a cradled wood panel here that I had already started painting on several weeks ago. And this piece was a little bit of a beast for me because I had started from a photograph that inspired the colors and some of the shapes but I don't remember quite why, but I ended up hitting pause on this piece and it sat on my little tabletop easel for over a month. <laughs> and every time I looked at it, I felt frustrated and I just didn't want to look at it because I felt like a failure because 
my typical way of working is to sit down and complete a piece, usually in one sitting, whether it's in an hour or a couple hours or a whole day or two. Um, I don't usually leave something unfinished because I fall out of the creative flow. So I think that was part of why I kept putting it off and putting it off because I didn't know how to get back into it. I didn't know how to proceed. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to dig into it and see what happens. And what you're going to see is that where I started completely morphed into something else by the end. Um, and it morphed into something that I really, really, really love. So to get kind of started and back into it, I had originally taped the sides of this wood panel, but I decided to take the tape off and with this new day of painting, <laughs> I decided to paint around the sides as well and extend the art to the edges. And I really loved this practice because it I think it just adds so much more to the entire piece. It makes it that much more interesting and that more that much more fun to look at from different angles. So I think this is something that I will do going forward whenever I paint on a wood panel. Um, it is something that I saw another artist do on YouTube, um, Betty Frank's art, if you're familiar with her work. And so that inspired me to give this a try. So I started mostly with my cool tones again, my blues and greens. And... I just really wanted to loosen up and get out of my head. You know, every time I sit down to paint, I have to kind of mentally prepare myself for letting go of the fear and the little voices that always come up, you know, at every stage of creating and being an artist. There are voices that pop up that say, oh, this doesn't look right. What are you doing? how dare you have the audacity to sit down and paint? <laughs> you know, it's like we all have these voices in our heads and you can either listen to them and choose not to create or you can find ways to quiet the voices and continue doing what you love. So by kind of loosening up as an artist sitting down to paint, um, it gets easier and easier to get into that creative flow if you just allow yourself some time to put down some marks, put down some paint, not really worrying or caring what it looks like because you know you're going to be layering on top of it, at least in this style of painting that I have really come to love and enjoy. Um, <laughs> I'm just kind of wandering around my room looking at all the laundry piles that I've ignored since coming back from our vacation last week. So if you hear some shuffling here and there, that is why. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have really grown into this style of painting. I've had several people kind of comment, oh, you really like those quick little colorful marks. And at first I was like, yeah, like, is there something wrong with that? <laughs> but then I started realizing this is my style that's emerging. This is the way that I work, the way that I love creating and painting. You know, the whole process for me is very meditative. It's very relaxing and soothing and calming. So finding the way that I enjoy painting and using color and using marks and figuring out which brushes I really tend to grab first. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm getting to a point where I'm making my own art that I enjoy, that is expressing my own style and my own thoughts and feelings and creativity instead of, you know, trying to work in a way that might not copy but you know might be inspired by someone else's work you know when I was a photographer for years and years and years there's just so many photographers there's so many artists there's so many writers there's so many creative people in the world 
And as a creative person, you find that you naturally gravitate towards certain individuals for whatever reason. It might be the colors that they use, or you might really enjoy their style of writing. You you get your favorites. <laughs> you have the people um, that you turn to as your inspiration, um, maybe your motivation to keep going. Maybe there's some aspect of what they are creating that really just drives you to keep exploring and keep finding your own style and your own path and your own words and way of expression. So, you know, when I was kind of just starting to paint regularly over the past year, I started finding some artists that I naturally gravitated towards. And they were artists who used a lot of vibrant color because I love vibrant color. I love using vibrant color. You know, I would look at artists who have very muted tones or very like calm, serene, smooth looking art. And I appreciate it. And it makes me feel things, but it also helps me realize that's not really the kind of art I'm interested in creating. That's not the kind of art that inspires me to sit down and do my own work. So, you know, by finding artists who have a certain kind of style that does inspire me and does spark some sort of creativity in me, it helps. Um, and I think what I, <laughs> when I was starting to say is when I was a photographer, I did the same thing. You know, I looked for photographers whose style I really loved and enjoyed that I thought was beautiful, that I thought was expressive and emotional, or maybe the way that they wrote blog posts about their photography and their experiences working with people or photographing an event or whatever. You know, I'm I find that I'm drawn to people who really kind of not only do the creative work, whether it's painting or photography, but they go extra steps in talking about it and sharing their ex experience in creating what they make. Um, and I think, you know, I am that kind of person. I enjoy sitting and talking about my process. I enjoy explaining and giving little insights. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think what I really hope is that if there's someone out there like me, maybe, who <laughs> is starting out and looking for inspiration and looking for someone who's willing to share a bit of their process, um, you know, I hope that maybe... I can be that person to someone else as many who have come before me have inspired me. So as you can see, I've already covered up a lot of what was on this wood panel. Um, and I really started getting into, I don't call it cross hatching, but I think the marks that I generally make are very quick and... Um, you know, either up and down or left to right or little dots. But I also have started playing with making these kind of small marks, but making different shapes. So I don't think it was this piece, but I actually sat down and made another painting right after this where I just started playing around with the shape of the brushes and exploring making other marks um, with other shapes and other forms. So I just blow dried the piece a little bit. I keep a little blow dryer on my art cart next to me because sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of the time I get very impatient when I want to make a bit of a drastic switch in colors and acrylic paint dries pretty quickly and I don't lay it on super thick but every now and then, you know, just a minute or so with the blow dryer helps move things along pretty quickly. Um, so that is what I was doing right there in case you've never seen someone use a blow dryer on their art. Um, that's another technique I've picked up from some other artists. I also like to keep a little water bottle with me there. And, um, you know, if I'm feeling a little stuck on something, sometimes I'll just create some drips to loosen up the actual art and let it literally free flow down the painting. Um, 
you know, the entire process, sometimes you start getting stuck on this one area of a painting and (laughs) you just overwork it and lose yourself in like this one small corner or piece of a painting. So I try to move around the entire piece constantly so that I'm never really getting stuck. And I do find, um, the past couple times I've sat down to paint, I do find that I ignore the very middle, like the very center of a piece. I don't give as much attention to because I start looking all around kind of like looking like a clock, you know, turning my head around and around the outer parts. And then I look in the middle and I'm like, oh, I haven't touched the middle in quite a while. So (laughs) you know, I'm constantly learning as I go. I'm constantly learning about myself and how I work and things that I want to challenge myself to improve upon. Um, Yeah, that's one little thing that in this piece and the one that I painted after, I noticed. I was like, oh, I need to remember not just to work around the outside edges, but also the middle of the painting. Um you know, you don't want to think that you're finished and then stare at a painting and see that the middle is just kind of like a flat stamp of color. Um, Yeah, but I am really enjoying this kind of style. And I find that, you know, for me, painting, it's not so much about making something that looks like something, but I am, I think, finding that I love painting something that feels like something. So, um, you know, for a while, when I was younger, I focused a lot on realism, and I had all these art books about how to draw things, you know, very specific things, and it gave you step by step. Um, And then, you know, I never, ever really thought, that I would want to paint abstracts. Um, And if you go back and watch one of my early videos on this channel where I was trying abstract for the first time, it was incredibly frustrating and it took several days. And then I actually ended up taking that first piece that I made as an abstract and I completely painted over it just a couple weeks ago. (laughs) Because I was like, oh, this is this is not great. Like, (laughs) I don't like staring at this, you know, I don't know if I'm ever going to sell it, but I don't want this awkwardness staring at me every day from my little bookshelves full of art. So, um, you know, always learning, always growing, but you know, when I was a kid and I'm seeing this now with my daughter, she's very interested in art and she's very talented and she's learning so much, um, on her own, Sometimes she sits and watches painting videos with me. She loves watching drawing videos. There's so many resources out there that are available to us um, that if you're interested in drawing or painting or creating anything, oh my gosh, you guys, YouTube, like I will watch people crocheting. I will watch people painting. I will watch people sculpting. I watch people make Lego sculptures like there's so many amazing things out there and people are so willing to share their creative process that you know whether it's for learning or for entertainment um if there's anything you want to know I mean I go to YouTube before I go to Google now because I'm gonna learn visually quicker than learning through like a a written tutorial um yeah so the sides of this look kind of messy and blah right now but by the end it does all tie together really nicely um I think that's just such a nice way to extend the art I've seen canvases that they just kind of duplicate that last inch of each side over to the edges and that's usually when you get like a printed canvas of art um so this is where I think originals get really special in that you get that extension of a piece um, on each side. It just makes it flow out into the walls, I think. (laughs) 
so I had started with a lot of blue and green and I am just loving purple lately. I loved purple as a kid and I think sometimes people are afraid to use certain colors in their art thinking it might make it look cheap or gaudy or I don't know what like <laughs> sometimes in the art world you hear people talk about colors with like so much disdain and I really just want to explore and appreciate every color on the spectrum so you will often see most of my art will have a lot of color um, even if it's primarily, you know, blue and green and purple, you will see yellow and red and orange peeking out or, you know, I always try to include the full spectrum in all of my pieces in some way. <laughs> Sometimes it's very, very small and subtle. Um, but you know, one of my favorite classes in college was called color and design. And it was just all about color and how we see color, how we perceive color, how colors complement each other. Um, so that is also another reason that I love creating vibrant pieces. I love seeing how colors interact and I love seeing how they work together or how they create tension or harmony. Um, so, you know, where I have a lot of purple, you're going to see a little bit of orange and where you see, you know, especially like a bluish purple. Um, so if you're looking at a color wheel, and if you don't know what a color wheel is, you can look it up really easily on YouTube or Google or Pinterest, you know, just type in color wheel and you'll see almost like a pie, you'll see all the colors in a wheel and the colors that are opposite each other are complementary. So you have your primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and then you have your secondary colors that when you mix your primary colors together, you mix red and blue, you get purple, you mix blue and yellow, you get green, you mix yellow and red, you get orange. And then there's the full spectrum within those colors. Um, but when you pair a primary color with a secondary color, they are complementary. So blue is opposite orange. And let's see, I have to think in my head. <laughs> Red is opposite green and yellow is opposite purple. So I try to always keep this in mind when I'm working on a really colorful piece to make sure there are obvious places where the colors are harmonizing and complementing each other. Um, you know, you could have a cotton candy sky of a very soft blue fading into like a maroon but then it makes it really interesting when you add like a little bit of an orange or yellow glow in there it really pulls out those primary colors that um you want to really shine so this might be looking like a hot mess right now and it's maybe halfway to the finish point um just to give you an idea this style of creating I also really love because it can it's really unending <laughs> sometimes it feels like I'm not quite sure when it's going to be done um, but I do start to get an idea um, about at the halfway point that okay this is the shape the piece is taking and this is where I'm going to start focusing on adding in all those other little colorful specks and making sure you know if you squint if you squint your eyes and you really just see like a lot of lights and darks everything flows smoothly everything has a balance to it there's different areas of the painting where your eyes can just kind of rest like that bottom left corner it's very soft and soothing whereas other parts of the painting kind of make you want to look really closely and see all those little details all right so here is where I start adding in my red and really getting playful with the colors I have to be very careful with red because I can get very heavy-handed with color and I have actually worked on some paintings where 
<laughs> I sit back and I'm like, oh, this looks like a massacre. It looks like a crime scene. Like I have to tone this down <laughs> with some soothing colors because I mean, red is one of those very bold, solid colors that, you know, it grabs your attention. And if there's too much red, um, it can really overpower the piece. So red, I have to remind myself to be very intentional with where I lay those marks down. And you can see I just mixed that red with a little bit of um, warm yellow ochre, I believe, um, or no, cadmium yellow, and made like a warm glowy orange. So that's going to soften the red areas a little bit and also complement all the purples and blues that are around because you can see some of the yellow tones within the orange. Um, so it's going to kind of pull it all together. So this piece ended up, I said that when I started, I had a picture of um, like a lake with mountains and rocks that, you know, the rocks were very colorful and that's kind of where I started. Um, but then when I got back into this process um, recording this video, I came back from vacation and it was a very rainy, 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 rainy vacation. Um, lots of clouds. It was very cool. You know, for summer in New England, you just never know what you're going to get for weather. But before we had left to drive up to New Hampshire, we were at my in-law's house and I was photographing some flowers around my mother-in-law's gardens. Um, she has these really beautiful, incredible hydrangea bushes all around the front of their front porch. And they have these like fuchsia daisies that have like a burnt orangey red center and daylilies. And there were just all these vibrant, vibrant colors that in the sunlight, they look pretty, but on a rainy, cloudy day, the colors just stand out in a completely different way. Everything is so much more vibrant and beautiful. So inspired by these vibrant colors of the flowers and inspired by all the rainy weather <laughs> and how that gloominess, the cloudiness, the overcast kind of brings out um, the vibrancy of the flowers. That's kind of what really started to take shape in my head as I worked on this. Um, so you'll see some marks that might look like little petals that look like, you know, little splashes of color. And when you're looking at whether it's a bouquet of flowers or a garden of flowers or a field of wildflowers, you know, you don't really see all these individual little flowers, but you just start to see these beautiful masses of color that blend together and flow and, you know, so that is really what ultimately inspired this piece. Um, and as I'm adding some light yellow now, you know, there's no limit to the colors that you can see within a garden. I'm just, I'm always inspired by flowers. I'm always looking to nature for, you know, I'm bookmarking pictures. I'm taking pictures. I'm always carrying my cell phone because not only do I take millions of photos of my kids, I am always taking pictures when I am out and about. If I see something, it doesn't matter where it is, but if I see something that inspires me, I have to take a picture because I know that I'm going to come back to it at some point, um, you know, as a reference for my art or my writing. So I have about a dozen pictures from right before vacation of all these different flowers and the colors because I knew I was going to come home and want to paint something. <laughs> So this is where in the process it starts to really come together and I start to get really excited because it's feeling good. I'm still, I know that it's not done, but I know that it's 
getting to a point of progressing to where I want it to be. I'm looking at the sides now thinking, okay, how can I make these a little bit more interesting? Now I sped up this part of the video to about one and a half speed because I want you to kind of see how I work in real time, but it does take a little while and sometimes I'm painting for over an hour um, knowing that <laughs> I'm going to be talking over the process. So I did speed it up a little bit, but not so much that it looks rushed. Um, you can kind of see how I pace with the mark making and with the different strokes. And right next to my easel, it's a tabletop easel. I'll, I'll do another video at some point soon about um, the different tools that I use and things that I have in my little tiny studio space here um, and where, where I get them. If that's interesting to you, if you're interested in getting some new art supplies or ways to find supplies that fit into small spaces, I am your queen of those things, I think. <laughs> Um, we live in a condo and, you know, you can see from the beginning of the video, this is the front corner of our living room. There's a big picture window to my left and I love painting during daylight hours. Usually mid to late afternoon is like my perfect time to be painting. That's when I'm usually feeling the most inspired and energized to sit down and, so I usually just open the shades and my kids are playing outside or if it's, you know, a rainy day like it's been lately, they might be inside. Um, but yeah, it's just this little corner of our home and I have kind of configured little ways of having the things that I love and need <laughs> to use to make my paintings and trying not to load up on too many supplies that might end up just sitting there and not being used. Um, I think any artist can maybe relate to having a stash of stuff and feeling the need to de-stash fairly frequently, I think. Um, I've always been someone who enjoys crocheting and knitting, and when it comes to craft supplies like yarn and stuff like that. I mean, I could go into a craft store every day of the week and walk out with a basket full of yarn. Um, so I'm learning <laughs> at this stage of life, you know, I've given yarn away to people in my town and, uh, there's a woman in my town who makes blankets for veterans. I've given stuff to my sister. She does a lot more crocheting and knitting than I ever do. I really love it in the winter time, but I don't typically pick up my crochet projects in the warmer months. Um, but my sister will always be knitting or crocheting all year. You know, we will be at my parents' house for an afternoon swimming in the pool and my sister, um, she'll be sitting under a tree working on whatever her knitting project of the day is or crocheting. Um, she makes some really amazing stuff. I tend to crochet in straight lines. Like I can make blankets and scarves <laughs> and hats. Um, but my sister makes amazing things. She can make clothing. She can make gloves. I think she's made socks. Um, she makes these beautiful shawls and she explores like really cool different kinds of patterns, um, that are really interesting. So yeah, she is, one of the people who benefits from my inability to hold back when it comes to buying lots and lots of yarn at the craft store. So I know that when I'm starting a piece, I tend to stick to my cool colors first. So my blues and my greens, because I don't want to mix my warms and my cools too much, or it can very quickly start to get muddy. So what I usually do is starting with the cools, I'll put down like my base layers 
and then start to take shape with my warm tones. Um, but you can see here, now I'm kind of switching back and forth a little bit more in between um, to add back in some of these green areas. Like I said, this piece is largely inspired by a flower garden and the colors that you see on a more overcast, cloudy, rainy day emerging from a flower garden. Everything looks a little bit greener, a little bit brighter and saturated. So after I started adding in more warm colors, I realized, you know, I really do want a lot more green showing through in this piece to represent all those leaves and stems and pieces of a garden that make it look a little wild. And they do complement um, the other colors very nicely. It makes those reds pop a little bit more. And then I like to add a little bit by a little bit some yellow and some white to that green so it's not just the really saturated dark green but different tones of greens because you look at a garden you see all these different colors in the spectrum you don't just see one green you don't just see one red you don't just see one purple you see all these different tones all these different hues and they all end up working together and blending together beautifully so this is kind of the time where I'm looking at it and thinking, okay, what else does it need? Does it need some more highlights? Yes, I'm going to add some more light, light yellow. I use a Liquitex white gesso to mix in with my colors. Um, I just find that it's easier to use that in bulk and it dries pretty quickly. So whenever I'm adding white to a color, I know that... Um, I can layer on top of it pretty quickly and easily. Yeah, I'm using these like little, <laughs> these little dot marks to add a little bit more interest and texture and color into different spaces. You know, some areas of a garden might look a little bit more calm and solid in color. And then there's areas of gardens that are just wild and colorful and Everywhere you look is a different shape and color and texture. So I wanted to create a little bit of that wild scattered feeling. Painting the sides, making sure those are tying in nicely to what's on the front panel. I really love how that came out. So after I was mostly done with the paints, I do use these Neocolor Artist Crayons that are water soluble, which means you can put marks down. And then if you put anything wet on top, whether it's water or more paint, they will become a little bit more like a watercolor flowy uh, finish. <laughs> Um, but I really love using these as mark making. After I'm done my painting, I like to blend a little bit brighter and vibrant little areas just to kind of bring out a little bit more of some of the colors, like that really bright lime green. It just kind of helps add a little bit of pop here and there. And you, you know, you might not even notice it until you're really up close looking at the painting. But these are some of my favorite tools that I've discovered um, by accident, actually, because they came to me in a bundle of hand-me-down art supplies from a local friend. And I was like, what are these things? And then I was like, oh, these are good. I like this. I like using these a lot. So um, again, they're called Neocolor Artist Crayons. All right, friends, that is going to be it for today. This is the final painting. It is called It Rained All Summer. And I think when I look at it, I'm just gonna remember this time of the summer that it was very rainy and cloudy and we had a wonderful vacation in New Hampshire and all the flowers and trees and grass were just so vibrant and green and colorful and pretty. 
Um, I love how the sides came out, painting the sides of the cradled wood panel. And I think this is just gonna be one of my favorite pieces from this whole summer. So thank you so much for watching and joining me as I did this painting exploration. Don't forget to hit subscribe below and hit the little bell button to let you know when I have new videos posted, you'll get notified. And if you're interested in seeing more of my work, my website is linked below in the description. Thanks for watching.